Showtime might be leaving the business of boxing. There's been a lot of rumors. Uh, we've seen a lot of tweets. I don't know if they're still called tweets, uh, but a lot of rumors they're circulating. Our hearts. That's all yeah. that matters. A lot of rumors circulating that Al Heyman is looking for a new network deal because Showtime is moving out of the business of boxing. Your thoughts on this? Allegedly. Uh, Steven Espinoza said like before, this is not the Al Heyman piece of it, which this is the important distinction, but he has said before, like, yeah, there's been rumors about Showtime potentially leaving boxing. We're just going to focus on making fights. This has been something that's been talked about for years. And I think it really sort of uh, peaked rumor wise once HBO left and it was like, how long are they going to be with Showtime? I didn't think they would. This, this is probably the most real it's felt. And I do, I, obviously I hope they don't. Showtime puts on, some of the best fights or a lot of the best fights now like a lot of the big fights that we've talked about this year canelo charlo was a big fight dud but a big fight nonetheless and um that was a showtime bout terence crawford versus errol spence which had fight of the year potential which is i think still probably the most memorable fight we'll have this year not the best and most competitive but the most memorable one which counts for something right and it's super high profile showtime fight javante davis ryan garcia the biggest pay-per-view of the year numerically showtime fight and it's not to say like it can't be done anywhere else necessarily but i've always enjoyed showtime productions and you know from the standpoint of covering fights like i like how showtime goes about their business um with respect to top rank the zone matchroom i should say um etc like i just i've always appreciated how showtime sort of handles media um compared to others and uh I I think that a lot of that could still stay intact if they left Showtime as a network, but Showtime is like an official, like it's a real brand. But yeah, you know, let's be serious. Like I don't I don't know how Showtime Sports is doing, right? They have an entire Showtime basketball division that somebody who's a basketball head like me doesn't really pay attention to because I get basketball content from elsewhere, right? Like <laughs> there's not a lot of content they push out of there either. Like, sure, they have all the smoke and they have uh, Rachel Nichols on there and everything like that. But, I mean, this is not a basketball bo podcast, but they don't push out too much content. No, but, it, it, this, but the, this matters in terms of the yeah. business of it, right? Like, it, the, the direction that things are going, I'm not sure that boxing is in the plans. And that's that's kind of what this all goes back to. It's like the direction that HBO was going at one point, you could see where boxing doesn't become a priority, right? Leadership changes. And then it's like, all right, somebody comes in. This happened to the Barclays Center. Used to be fights at Barclays Center all the time. Showtime, PBC had like a brand, Brooklyn Boxing, right? That whenever the fights would come, it's a Brooklyn Boxing event. We haven't had a fight at the Barclays Center like all year, which is crazy to think about. Um, I don't know when we're going to get one. There was rumored to be one uh, in July between Danny Garcia or August, Danny Garcia, Eris Landiara. That didn't happen, right? And it's like, we're not, we're not getting the fights in New York like that. And Showtime would usually be putting them on when they're at the Barclays. Whenever it was the Barclays, it's a Showtime fight. Whenever it's at Madison Square Garden, it was like an HBO and then later ESPN fight. And all that is changing. And I think that what we're going to see is I wonder how long ESPN and Top Rank are going to do business together. I think it's been successful, but I don't I don't know if they're running to put on like I was watching the Venado Lopez fight and I was like. ESPN didn't really promote this at all. They just kind of put it in the corner during first take, like Lopez versus whoever. And they're not telling you who these people are. And I'm wondering, like, is it just going to be one of these things that gets swallowed by either a streamer or is it just going to be Amazon comes in and it's like, all right, we're going to make this a thing. But I don't know who's running to get behind the business of boxing, even though Jake Paul has happened, even though boxing's had a pretty good year in terms of super fights. These are the questions I have. Yeah, um, I let Ryan, Brian go on a little bit of a rant there. Uh, you talked for a minute, man. Uh, finally, I get to say something about this, but <laughs> uh, just to give you I have a, a lot bit. of thoughts when it comes to the business of how all this works. So. You know, I think the biggest thing about this is I think we kind of saw this um, like foreshadowing happening, right? When HBO left the business of boxing, which I thought HBO did it the best. Like, I miss boxing being on HBO. There was always the question of how long is Showtime going to hold on to boxing? And now we're hearing all these reports that if Showtime does continue with boxing, it's going to be like one-off pay-per-view events. There's not going to be a show box. 
which is interesting because of course, then you were seeing up and coming fighters. And the interesting part about that is usually for Showbox as well for those, you know, fights before even um, the undercard or anything like that. YouTube would sometimes you could see Showbox on YouTube and we're talking about different networks that Al Heyman could go to. I think one really interesting one could be YouTube because there's YouTube TV. You talked about Amazon. I really think that maybe boxing could be on Amazon Prime, uh, just like how they're doing the NFL. Apple would be a huge one. I think Apple TV would be the wrong move because let's take a look at what the MLS is doing right now. Like nobody's really catching those games unless you have Apple TV or you're like a huge, huge soccer fan. Um, I don't know how it's being played there in the States, but here in Canada, like we're getting games that aren't even local teams. We're getting like Seattle and Atlanta, even though Seattle's like two hours away from here uh, where I live. But nonetheless, it's one of those things where it's like, I think that was a wrong move for the MLS to go to Apple TV and wherever boxing goes, there's always the question of is boxing dying? Not when you take a look at the pay-per-view numbers. Not when you take a look at what Tank and Ryan did. Not when you take a look at what Canelo just did with Charlo. Like the numbers are still coming in and people still care about it. But how can they give us this product that boxing fans want to see and that makes it more accessible? You talked about top rank. The one thing that I noticed is top rank ESPN plus does its thing, right? Um, And everything is kind of more in a streaming base now. I think the one thing that we have to realize is as much as we grew up with network television, it's now called linear TV. It sounds old, right? <laughs> like the, even the even the name linear TV sounds old. So I think when you take a look at it in that standpoint, boxing has to find a place where it's going to be able to live and grow. And I think one of the best places that could possibly do that is probably YouTube, to be honest with you, because everyone's on YouTube. YouTube TV is a great platform. We're on We're on YouTube doing a boxing show. There's so many different boxing outlets on YouTube. And if you're a boxing fan and you want to find something, you can't really go anywhere. Like I can't really go on like, yeah, sure. You know, Showtime will post some stuff. Showtime boxing has its own X page or whatever the hell it's called now. Uh, You know, IG page and stuff like that. But if I really want content, I go on YouTube for it. So I honestly think YouTube TV could be one of those platforms. It's interesting though, because I think it all really necessarily depends on like, how this is all going to go. And this is going to shift everything. If you think about it, because then what is top rank going to do? Personally, top rank is my favorite. I like it over Showtime. Um, Top rank's always been my favorite. So I'm interested in seeing, I don't see ESPN leaving the business of boxing, but right now there's so many changes at ESPN where you're like, is, are they going to leave boxing? There's a big possibility. The one thing that I don't want to happen is either of these go on to zone. <laughs> Because uh, you know how people feel about matchroom boxing. I mean, don't get it twisted. I have the zone. I use it often. I watch all the matchroom boxing fights. They have a NFL Sunday ticket on there. Um, they have a bunch of stuff on there. So I have it, but I specifically got it for football. Um, you know, and then I get all the boxing fights. But I think the zone is in the running for it too. Um, you know, they could strike a deal with Al Heyman. But listen, here's the thing: if they did do that, then it makes it easier for you know. Al Heyman to make more fights with uh, matchroom boxing. Like that's what it comes down to, right? So if they were on the same network like DAZN, hey, maybe we, we would get bigger fights. And I think that's the biggest question coming into this. Are we going to continue to get those big fights? Because I think there's a way that boxing can win, but it's all about money and who wants to make the money. So those are kind of my thoughts on it, Brian. Any last thoughts before we get up uh, out of here? Yeah, I don't know if the sport is winning as a whole because I think while we have gotten the high-profile fights this year, when you're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, the sport beyond that, it's it's kind of like, doesn't it feel like anything else where the people at the top are winning? And then everyone else in the middle is kind of like in a weird place. Like, yeah, dudes are getting paid, but also you have, again, prospects fighting once or twice in a year. You have champions that are inactive. You have champions that are fighting once in a year, and that's not helping the sport either, whether that's the fighter, whether that's promotional, whether that's injury, like bad luck, like Virgil Ortiz, for example, was going to fight multiple times this year. He kept having problems, and now we don't even know if he can make welterweight at this point, right? And it looked like one of the best prospects in the sport coming up. And I think if the sport is going to live somewhere, yeah, it's probably going to be YouTube because a long time ago, the networks determined boxing wasn't that important. 
And so then people just started doing things on YouTube. And now YouTube is probably where you would find the most boxing content, which is fine. But that also means like these networks aren't taking it seriously. Is that a mistake on their part? The numbers would show that it's probably not, generally speaking, because boxing pay-per-views, like the, the one occasional fight every couple months does pretty well. Is that enough for them to have a constant partner is probably the math that people are doing, which is why HBO got out. Showtime yeah. may get out. Like th this is why, and it's like boxing needs to be in a better state to become a priority again, or does it just benefit them to just do it themselves and be on YouTube, whether it's PBC or somebody else? Cause I think PBC has the resources to just do it themselves. If they want to I think people have more real resources than they realize, but I think, uh, yeah, I think wherever, wherever, if there's a pivot from Showtime, cause you know, let's still deal with ifs because we don't know what's going to actually happen. But if there's a pivot from Showtime, yeah, I think that YouTube is going to be a big part of whatever it is, because that would make a lot of sense because that's where the majority of boxing fans are, because they're not getting their content from ESPN all the time. No, because no. Who, who is talking about it? The only time that the big shows on ESPN, because ESPN basically, as Dan Levitar says, is basically an infomercial to get you to the games and the events that they have. So they'll talk about a big fight when one if it's going to be a top ranked one but two if it's a pay-per-view it's like they'll talk about it then so this is once every couple months but you know what it's not even the content that you necessarily want like when it is a big fight like no, no like i'm not gonna sit here and lie um and this is no heat towards a guy like stephen a smith but when max was on there i want to hear what max has got to say about this right i'm not really turning on first take or something like that to hear them talk about who's going to win, win against uh, Canelo and Jermel Charlo. Like, as a diehard boxing fan. Like, that's not my first go-to. Is it yours? No, never. Yeah. It, but, like, it, it, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I'm not – I don't consume a lot of boxing content in the whole um, because I just I just don't – I just don't think that there's a lot of uh, – I'll be careful about the wording here, but, like – I find a lot more basketball things that I like. Of is course, what I would say. Yeah, but I also don't think that we get the content that we get from like basketball and NFL from boxing. We like, don't. That's the at issue, all. right? So I, I think that's why, because I'm in the same boat with you. I don't consume boxing content at all. The most content I consume is ours. <laughs> you know, like, and and it's not. Yeah, here. and I don't. Yeah, and I, at the risk of sounding like you know like that, but no, I get what you're saying because a lot of see. I feel like basketball as a whole, as an industry, as a sport, is covered more fairly, generally speaking. You have more professionals actually covering it. You have more professionals talking about it. Now, you could argue about who's doing what and who's bought with who. Like, there was the, people were accusing Woes of being bought by the Portland Trailblazers. And that's why he was <laughs> reporting the way he was reporting. People were accusing oh, people were accusing Chris Haynes of being in Damian Lillard's corner. And that's why that yeah. played out the way it was. Like at the end of the day, everybody is somebody's mouthpiece, quote unquote. But in boxing, it's like it, it, in basketball, it's like, OK, you have reporters that are reporting the side that they're getting it from the best. Whereas in boxing, there's barely any reporting going on. It's just arguing on behalf of who you think is your favorite fighter or whatever. And people are just. You know, as 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 Lou DeBella said on our show, mother effing each other in the name of their favorite fighter. And these are, you know, people with large followings, which, you know, I personally, I'm not going to get down like that. Mm -hmm. Respect to people who are, I guess, because like, you know, that's how they're making their bread. But that's just not how I choose to do it. But in boxing, that's generally what you find. And that's why when you look at who's actually, you know, on these sort of reporter roles, it's the same people at the same sort of you know, working at the same different outlets. They're just moving around a little bit. Mike Coppinger wasn't always at ESPN. He was at The Athletic first, and he's one of the only newsbreakers that the sport has. And a lot of people in the sport mother F him um, because he's an actual reporter, right? Even though he doesn't get things right all the time, nobody does. And I'm off on a little bit of a tangent, but you could see that I have a lot of like festering sort of thoughts about the boxing business and why people don't take it seriously as both a sport and just as an industry, which is separate from the sport and just how it runs. 
So. And you know, and you know what? Um, a great episode. If you guys haven't checked it out, uh, Lou DiBella, who we should try to probably get up back on the show again, Brian. That would be a good all, time because all this news has come out. Go check that out because he talked about uh, the state of boxing on that episode. It was actually our first episode ever here on the mandatory. If you click on our interview section, you'll see all the interviews there. Um, but before we get up and out of here, I just want to say thank you for everyone that rocked with us on the Canelo Charlo live. We appreciate you. Uh, we're gonna bring you some more content, of course. And if you want us to do more lives, drop some comments below. Let us know what you think about the state of boxing, the business of boxing, and where you would like to see PBC go um, if Showtime does leave boxing. Uh, let us know. Drop some comments below. And uh, we'll be with some more content for you very, very soon. Some uh, sneaky good fights uh, that are obviously actually coming up. Brian, uh, final thoughts before we get up and out of here. I should probably shut up. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> and with that being said, we out of here. <laughs>